So five weeks ago, Zwift was not on my radar. End of last year, I joined a commercial gym and found that my love for running and indirectly cardio meant that I gravitated towards the rowing machine and the exercise bike, not the treadmill. I tried the treadmill and they called it the dreadmill for a reason. I wasn't a fan of that, staring at a blank wall while running. So prior to November, December last year, I'd never used an exercise bike or set foot in a commercial gym before. And the last time I'd ridden a bicycle, other than a very short stint on one in 2019 in an attempt to lose weight, but I didn't know how, was back in, in the 1980s and 1990s as an inner London kid where I bicycled everywhere. I loved the gym exercise bike, but I needed something to achieve on it. So I decided to splash out on the Watt Bike Smart Bike. I downloaded Zwift, 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 Zwift. And for a month now, I've been racing on Zwift in Cat D. I've been given loads of advice online about going through the training sections on Zwift. But if I'm honest, with work and running, I have limited time to invest into Zwift. And I want the time to be as fun as possible. So I race. I race instead of training. But I see racing as training. Two days ago, I entered into the 3R Watopia Hilly Race, three laps over 27K, and it had that U-bend climb that averages 6% over 0.9 kilometers. I was late getting home from work, so I didn't have the time to set up the camera to film myself, but I did manage to screen record the race. I wasn't originally going to include this race in the video, but I found something unique in it that I think may make a good video, uh, and a point that elite or far more capable runners than me maybe don't appreciate. This is moments after the start banner dropped and the lead pack blasted off from the line. You can see that some of them were doing in excess of 4.0 watts per kilogram. They were the ones that were near me. The, the, the A riders had zoomed off. So in priority order, based on what I've learned so far, my new priorities for Zwift are, number one, do not get dropped. Priority one, off the start line, will always be to remain with the lead group. My number one rule for Zwift is do not get dropped on the line. This means always get off the start line with the lead group. If you haven't seen my rules for this, watch my previous video about the first month on Zwift. Oh, it's no easy. I'm fine getting dropped on a steep hill as I'm simply too darn heavy to compete with that, but there's no excuse for being dropped on the start line. However, having said that, something I can't sustain for more than a few seconds is four or 500 watts off the start line. And if I did that at this point, I'd be cooked for the rest of the race. What also threw me was that all the Cat D, C, B and A riders started together as the banner dropped, something I'd never experienced before. And it was only after I'd attempted to stick with my priority one, I realized how hard they were going. That was an eye opener. If I'm honest, for the first time, I felt slightly demotivated. And instead of pushing hard to keep with the other stragglers passing me, I just sat on 200 to 250 watts and accepted my fate. A very, very poor attitude. So this race is three laps of this course and I'm starting on the climb one of three. I'm gonna climb this hill three times basically. In my head at this point, I'm thinking I have no real motivation to keep racing. I've been dropped from any significant groups with no real chance of a comeback in the race. I'm in no man's land, straight after the start line, and now I have to climb this monster hill on my own. I was contemplating what to do. I hate quitting, but this is a race and not a social. Now I could see a small bunch of stragglers ahead of me and I pushed to try and join up with them. But even then, they dropped me on the hill. And by the time I dragged myself to the top of the hill, they were well over a minute ahead of me. And this kind of distance in this race with these hills on this course, they may have well have been in a different race to me. You see, this race made me realize how far I had to go in the world of Zwift racing. Do I quit now as I have no real incentive to keep fighting as there is nothing I can find to fight for? I had rushed home from work for this race, joined it as there were no others starting at this time, and it was already 10 p.m. and with work the next day, I just wanted to get on with it. Or do I just finish it as a training ride? There is something positive about racing with other better riders. If you wanna get good at golf, then play with Tiger Woods, if you get my point. I regularly run park runs, 
their 5k races for anyone that doesn't run. They're in your local park where you can meet up, meet up with your mates and have a social. Or if you're like me, you can go to race other like-minded individuals and see how you fare against them. I currently have a target to hit in park runs. Run one in under 30 minutes. If you want to know more, watch my other videos I've made about this challenge. Because the majority of park runners are enthusiasts, they smash through 30 minutes easily. Some are even doing it in under 20 minutes. These runners that do it in under 20 minutes are Cat A or Cat B park runners. I'm a Cat D park runner. My point here is that when I'm left in the dust of the faster runners, I don't throw my toys out the pram. I've already managed my own expectations before I started. I like to quietly single out a slightly faster runner than me and attempt to race them, forcing myself to run at a faster pace than I'm used to, and then ultimately, hopefully, beat them to the finish line. So back to the race. In my head, at this point, I remember my park run mentality and think, sod it. Let's chase down the rider in front of me. Let's push as hard as I can without any draft or pacers and catch the rider in front of me. That would be my challenge for this race. Just beat the rider in front of me to the finish line. I've ridden this route several times now. I know there's a nice downhill section that peaks at 8%. So I try it and drop over 400 watts into the slope just before the decline and I managed to make up some ground on my target. I managed to drop them down from 1 minute 18 seconds ahead of me at the top of the hill down to 1 minute 2 seconds at the bottom. I gained 16 seconds on them in a short space of time. I'll now fast forward to the start of lap 2 where they're now only 38 seconds ahead of me. I know they know this as they have slightly increased their output. As I start the climb on the monster hill for the second time, they're now only 17 seconds ahead of me. I go for it up this hill, trying my best to keep my numbers in the 200s. As we turn the corner, I can see them up ahead of me, only five seconds ahead. I know they're also racing me, trying to stop me gaining. You can see it from their output. This hill was their only chance to permanently drop me. I'm very slow on hills, especially long steep ones like this. I'm faster on flats and descents because of my weight. I finally catch them at 27.09 on the flats. And I get a ride on from them. They knew what I was trying to do and I appreciate that. I also gave them a ride on. Camaraderie on Zwift, I love it. We stick together for a short period to allow the blood to flow back into the legs and then I attempt to put time between myself and them. I waited for my secret heel, my secret weapon, and I tried again to drop 400 watts into it. I only managed high 300s at this point to kick me through and into decline, knowing that my weight and speed down this section will catapult me away from them unless they also put effort in. I did hope I would catch them off guard and get away, but I also hoped that they would try to stop me so we could have our own little battle. Looking back on this footage now, it does crack me up how seriously I took this mini battle. I'm using tactics I've learned from other YouTube Zwifters to, de to defeat this guy and acting as if we were in our own little battle for first place. To put it into perspective, I'm 26 out of 36 at this point. So my tactic worked and at the bottom of the hill, I managed to win a five second gap between us. He would now need to put in a burst to catch me. I then get lapped by two A riders who zoom past me like I'm nothing, which was very humbling. And I reach the start of the third lap, 45 seconds ahead of my new friend. I'm pleased with this, but I'm also aware that if I've been able to do this to him, then he can do the same to me if he wanted to. It just depends how much he's got left in the tank. And he does try. I can see that by the time I'm halfway up the climb for the third and final time, he is now only 15 seconds behind me. He has made up quite a lot of time on me. I knew that if I could hold him off until the top, I would beat him on the flats and descents. I'm pretty confident he doesn't have a lot left, so I pushed hard to the top and even managed to increase the gap to 24 seconds on the hill. This win I knew was mine now. 
There was no way he was catching me on this section. I unlocked my coloured socks and pushed on as hard as I could to the finish line. I crossed the finish line one minute and 29 seconds ahead of him. Forget about the finished stats, they're not important in this race. I was very pleased with myself for two reasons. Most importantly, I didn't quit the race when I had nothing to race for. I found a battle within the race and I won it. I didn't record this race to make this video with this message. It was an accident. This race made me remember why I bought a smart bike in the first place and why it's so much better than spinning on a gym exercise bike staring at a blank wall. I'm not going to come first in every race, but in every race I am winning. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.